Hey everybody, um, this is our next daily pattern and it looks a little more complicated than the others. The, the actual drawing of the, of the single pattern isn't, doesn't look like it would be that difficult, but when you add it all together, it looks like it's going to be a little more complex. So we'll just break it down step by step and we'll do it together here. Um, apparently you need a teardrop with another teardrop kind of aura around it. And then you fill in that middle one and you do, actually, oh, I see. <laughs> All right, that's how they did it. So they drew a teardrop with another one. Oh, and then, um, then they filled a little teardrop in the middle and did these lines, okay? You could probably do that step in any order probably won't doesn't make that much difference um, and then there's this these dots and this kind of scallop shape um, I think the hardest thing for me is going to be re to remember to do this thing so I may start there when I'm when I'm drawing um, and then step four this looks like this is the hardest step is sort of a fire type shape. They're curved, but there are some curved are this way, some are curved the other way. Feathery bit around the outside. So that I think is going to be the hardest part. We'll see. See how that goes. So it should look like that and then you can add another one and continue on filling your space with with these peacock like feathers in it. The sample shows it it like that which is really cool. Um, oh, I forgot to say, it's called Peasley by Jenna D. Mills. In case you need to look it up. And I'm getting all of these patterns just to let you know I'm on the, on the Daily Focus page at um, pattern-collections.com. So if that's, that's where you want to go if you want to find these patterns. So let's give this a try. First part, I don't think I'm going to have any problem with, which is finding myself a little teardrop like that, and then in the middle, filling that in and going around with that sort of all in one step, I think, I feel like that's that's easy to do. You guys can probably do that quick and easy. That's the easy part. Um, I'm going to do this shape first. And then do these scallops. And then put a dot inside each one something like that that's the next step and then the last step that's the one I'm gonna have to really kind of look at over here on my phone looks like we're gonna to wanna to, it's all aura that's not none of it's really touching the other I may want to turn my tile I think I think peacock feather almost looks like fire to me maybe I'm going too far away from the thing but that's sort of the sort of the look I think I got a little carried away up here that looks like devil horns to me but maybe it'll go away when I do more on top of each other let's see do they overlap or do they just go next to one another it looks like you can overlap so I'm going to I'm going to do one 
here. I'm going to start here. That one's a bit bigger and it's a little lopsided, but that's all right. Okay, and then there's this. Oh. shape like that, kind of almost a heart shape right there. And then the scallops. And some dots. I think sometimes I mean not one those dots, I don't know. And then this sort of feathery bit that's going to That's all right. Whatever. Not sure it makes much difference. There you go. Oh, it looks better on the camera than it does in real life. Huh? <laughs> That's good. I think I'm getting. I think I've made these kind of too small, almost. Let me look at the the sample again. It's. I think they need to be. Let me look at mine in comparison. Mine looks more like flames than feathers. I think I have too many of them. I think I need to be, make them a little bit bigger and not quite so spiky. I don't know. Somehow mine don't look like they're flowing as nice. But we will just keep going. Just keep going. curve those this time and I left this on purpose a little bit of white like a sparkle in there and this definitely is definitely a heart shape and I'm kind of playing with scale here I've made these scallop bits bigger in scale than I did on the other ones compared to the teardrop shape. I'm going to try that and see what that does to the look. Okay, yeah, that looks different. I was, I, I actually had probably too many spikes, but I guess it, I guess it's up to you. You don't, it can be however you want it to be. I'm going to put one going, I'm going to make one kind of long and skinny and see what long and skinny does. So I'm going to make my initial Teardrop, long and skinny, like that. This is how I experiment with with patterns. I just kind of say, what if, what if, what if I make it skinny? What if I make it fat? What if I make it curvy? What if, what if, what if? Use those what ifs to change your patterns as you draw them, 
and you'll get some variety even when you're doing a whole uh, tangle mono tangle where you're still using just the same pattern you're not doing different patterns but if you change up scale or you know size or general shape like curves or straights it, it totally makes things look different and this is a heart shape here and I'm going to make these kind of go at an angle instead of straight for that and then I think on this one I'm not going to put dots I'm going to put a line in a dot and that will change the look of this particular one while still remaining the same pattern and then I'm going to continue I'm still going to do those kind of fiery, leafy, feathery, oops, that's kind of quirky, oh well, I say oh well a lot when I'm drawing, I've noticed that, I just kind of just go with the flow, that's been the hardest thing to learn, um, is to stop being so perfectionistic about things and to just let it go. Uh, I've said that before in other videos, but you know, it, that is the hardest thing. See, that one looks so totally different and, and it looks, I like it. I really do. I like it. Um, but with the other three, now it looks out of place. So what I need to do is over here when I do my next one I need to do another long skinny one so that I have at least two so that that one doesn't look like it doesn't belong. So I'm going to tuck it in here it long and skinny This time in here, I'm going to put like petal shapes like that instead. See how that's kind of petal shaped compared to those. Just do some, something a little different. Change it up a little with this kind of heart shape at the bottom. And then I'm going to just really play with scale here and just make a few of these instead of a bunch like that. But I'm still going to do, so I've, I've ch still changed one, one feature. I've changed these bumps so there are not as many of them. And I've changed the petal things in here. But at the same time, I've left other elements that are the same so that you recognize that it's still the same pattern. There we go. Now that looks a little more balanced because um, I have two long elements go along with my shorter elements. And I may just put one or two more here. One, wait, one, two, three, four, yeah. One, two, I think I need two more. So I'm gonna put one tucked in here and I'm gonna tuck this way back that you've, same thing here, I'm gonna tuck them kind of way back so, um, I'm only going to do part of the of 
the teardrop, but you're not going to see the bottom. Maybe tucked it back too far, but we're going to try that. Okay, so that one is just hiding behind the other one. And so I'm going to need another hiding behind one just to make that more balanced again um, we're going to hide it in here maybe not quite as far hidden kind of tuck that way in Something like that. Okay, and then it has these. Remember when they're overlapping to to go ahead and draw behind. Look right there. Goes behind there back out here it can sometimes be a little confusing do the best you can to, to draw behind All right that, that you know that looks finished to me yeah I although I kind of feel like I feel like I need something right there and here. Maybe it's not finished. I think maybe maybe. And I don't want I don't want more of this Peasley pattern. So maybe right here I'm just gonna do more of that kind of flamey looking thing. as a let me turn my page well that ended up an interesting shape my pen took a sort of a turn of its own there but I actually kind of like it I'm going to go ahead and make this kind of a center thing here I don't know All right, I'm going to do that in these spots as well. Where do I want to tuck that into? I want to tuck it into here. Almost like the feather has kind of come apart and it's kind of, blah, you know. Yeah. I don't know what I just said.
really not sure what I'm doing here. I am just making random flame-like shapes that are kind of coming out from one central spot just to fill the space. And I think that did what I was anticipating. I think it did good. It needs to have some sort of central thing here though. Okay, like that. So they kind of look like leaves or branches or loose feathers or something. I'm not exactly sure what those filler bits were, but they needed to be there. Okay, so the name of our pattern is where am I gonna put it? I didn't leave room for didn't leave room for writing. P E A S L E Peasley. All right, don't forget to sign your work. You always sign your work. And We'll put a little bit of shading in there and be done. So this wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Um, it, it, I would not call it a beginning pattern. That's for sure. I just, it's definitely a more challenging pattern. Um, I need to see where my overlaps are. Actually, I don't have a lot of overlap. For sure here is. So I definitely would not call this a beginner's pattern. Intermediate maybe. It's not super hard. Oh, that's not where I wanted that. That's not where I wanted that. Get rid of that right there. Just that one spot. Okay, needs to go this way. Hardest thing is to remember where your overlaps are. What's what's on top? What's on bottom? And and define that with your shading first before you do any of your other your other shading. Just so you know where your tops and your bottoms are. Sometimes, especially in a in a busy pattern like this, um, it can be difficult to figure out where those spots are that one thing is overlapping another. So you really need the shape, the shading, to bring that out. So just going around those few places where they overlap to highlight them first so that I don't lose them. I use a blending stump to blend out my pencil. You can use a tortillon if you prefer that. You can use a Q-tip or any other tool that you might have around the house that you can spread graphite with. This is the one I prefer. For me it's a sensory thing. I, I just like the way this feels in my hand and the way it moves on the page better than a Okay, so now I'm going to decide how I'm going to define my shapes here. I want, I just want a little bit at the bottom and here, this one. Um, these need just a little bit. I'm just going to do on the edges a little bit. I'm not really going to define those much. Um, oh, there's, there's another overlap I missed. How I missed that, I don't know. Okay, we want lots of, of that right there. 
And a little bit up in here on my leafy thing. A little bit here on these leafy things. And then we'll see what happens after that. Okay. Turn my page so I'm not getting my hand all in the graphite. Can you see how those the, the shading really helps pull that out? Oh, I'm low on battery. I better hurry. I've either got to hurry or I'm going to have to stop and start again. I don't want to stop and start again. So hurrying is going to happen here. A little bit of shading on this one. Right in the middle. And this feels like it needs that as well. A little bit of shading. I'm going fast as I can. Okay. Just going to define. I feel like the bottoms kind of need definition with shading, and that's probably all I really need is just to anchor the bottoms of each of these patterns. I think that's what it is. Blend those. All right, am I done? Looks good. I went fast, I got it finished, and there we go. Today's pattern is Peasley, and now I've got to go charge my battery. See y'all later.